You all know what we're doing. It is Invalid Entry 24 Python Live, which is a cool and fun to play with in 24 days for Advent Advent Code. Today we are looking at Network X, which I forgot to actually load up the page, but here it is, Network X. It's a network analysis in Python. Now, um, often with networks, graphs, we call them the same thing. And I don't mean charts like bar charts or pie charts. I mean graphs as in actual uh, network graphs. What's really interesting about these things is that uh, I, I, myself, I've been using graphs since uh, my dissertation, my third year at university, when I was doing uh, analyzing the construction of programs for DSP systems. Very, very geeky, very, very cool, talking about how we could test these things. Basically, um, a network is a series of things which connect to each other. And there's two real types of networks we care about. There is um, a undirected networks, where you have two nodes and there's a link between those two nodes, and directed networks, which is where the links have direction. On top of that, the actual links themselves may have weights or parameters or properties. Um, but that's what makes networks really powerful, is that you can say these are a relationship between two nodes. So a network could be anything from um, a, a real-world physical network or an analysis of like relationships between people or what people like or where people work. Um, a, a link between could be of different types. So it says I could work at this company, but this company is located at this location. So there's a different type that linking there. Um, but also sometimes they are um, related to physical things. So you could, you could map out the road system as a series of junctions. Every junction is a point. And then whether those points are connected is a link. And of course, with roads, roads could be one way. So you can consider an undirected graph to be a directed graph with a link going backwards and forwards. So directed links are very, very cool. For a long time, um, I was very good at analysing links. I wrote a lot of code to analyse links, analyse my networks, and analyse my graphs. Um, and I've used things like graph databases, but sometimes you want to just analyse a network just as it is, and that's where Network X comes in. So for a long time, you may be from, people may be familiar with DOT or the graph viz tool, which is super powerful. Uh, and you could do something very simple, similar here. So what I'm going to do very, 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 very quickly, I'm going to copy and paste this in. Is I'm going to actually crawl my own blog. So I'm just going to basically say here, I'm going to uh, grab my website, uh, go get it, go get the soup for that. Uh, I've actually got a little function here. Um, the function here is basically going to go to each URL it, 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 for you. For each URL in the URL, if there's a, it's going to find all the tags for that URL and it's going to save those tags into a big list. Uh, I didn't mean to enter there. Uh, 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 there, I hit enter. Um, and then uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do this bit of code here. And what this bit of code is going to do, I'm just going to run it through very quickly, is it's going to have a list of places I've been, so I'm not visiting the same place over and over. And whenever it finds a place, it's going to add a node, and then it's going to add a link between those nodes. So it's just going to run that through my website right now. Now, this is a bit of an interesting one, because what I'm interested in here is whether or not... This is, I'm doing this undirected, but it should be redirected. This page links to this page and so on. So it's going to each of these pages in turn, and at the end of it, I have now in memory a network of, of my site. One thing that I can do very quickly is I can then bring bring in a network. I can do my map plot stuff, which is a bit boring, tells you makes a big picture. And all I can actually do is I can draw onto that my network as such. And what you see here is in the middle here is my website, which is a very heavily uh, centrally linked thing. So all these pages, I'm using a, a, a website generator space, you might also be interested in here. So in the centre, you've probably got the home page and the tags page, where the outer side, you've got individual web pages which are linked together. On the outer of this, you've actually got other web pages. This one actually is on my site, but it links to four web pages externally. These are the individual blog entries linking to external sites. Maybe some don't have external links. So this is a visualization of how clustered my uh, page is. What we can actually do is remove the external ones, for example. Um, if it is a, an external one up here, I can actually... Uh, I, I could remove this Thomas and that I could start analyzing say, how interlinked is my website uh, I could also ask are there any dead links for my crawler as well so that could highlight how it's a different color but maybe what I'm interested in is not this you can do a dot, a dot a graph viz also known as dot or dotty um, but what's interesting about this is we can actually now begin to do some cool things so I have two web pages I have here start point and end point I'm sorry my, my, my page is just going off the site behind my screen sorry um, and what I'm interested here is actually what 
how would I get, how would the user get from one to the other? So I'm going to start putting my endpoint, and with this tool, I can then start to do network analyzing. So the shortest path is you go to this site, you find the link to Wireshark, you click that, and then you can find this tag. That That is the shortest way that a user can get from one point to another point. Um, so it's this shortest path type algorithm and other anal analytic tools say so how how tightly coupled are these links how tightly are these things connected are there any subgraphs in there which actually don't link out to anything else have I got any parts of my website which are not very well linked in but you can start to use these in other applications one of the big things in computer games for example is you may have uh, an understanding of the world you may have a, an actor a character in that world you say this character wants to get you may design a network or pairs of points of which what what if it's a tile based game which tile connects to which tile and therefore you can say you might say there's some mountains here or a door here and therefore it costs more to take this route versus this route um, and then you can say what's the shortest path and this will just calculate it and drop it out for you and it's very efficient much more efficient than you try to do um, if you do this at university you might use um, um, recursion and things to sort of discover this this uses quite well established uh, predefined functions to it very very cool library um, I absolutely like, I love graphs, I love analysing graphs and collecting graph data, uh, but this year is a very practical example of showing that you can generate graphs when you're trying to understand the relationship of two three things. Uh, graph databases are awesome, I definitely don't have time to do a graph database in these things and they're actually more of a system than a, a library, but this allows you to start analysing. As I say, there's a lot of actually analytical functions in here. Definitely go have a look at Network X. Have a look at things like uh, what people have done when they've been starting analysing, like trust chains, uh, who signed who certificates. Those kinds of things allow us to identify interesting uh, real-world environment situations. So if you've not really done graphs before, that these type of things, it's definitely worth looking at, and Network X would be one of the libraries I would recommend using if you go to this in Python. Uh, so, yeah, we're doing 24 libraries in 24 days. This is library number 9. Um, they're going to get a little bit more complicated for a few days. We've done a couple of really light, uh, really fast ones like paperclip and text and clean text, which is like one function each. Um, this one's going to get a bit more complicated. We're going to start doing some very cool stuff. I think tomorrow we're probably going to do Paramico, which is a, a library I really love. I use Paramico a lot, but I usually use it as an underlying library of other things I use like Fabric and Ansible. So if you want to see that, please hit subscribe and we will see you tomorrow. Thank you.